Hi everyone, Dennis Montecruz is here, and we're going to take a look today, hopefully to your enjoyment, at <laughs> one of my old games played back in 1986. Um, I was a master back then, I was 2300 plus, and my opponent was, um, I think around 2150 or so, or at least um, was there at some point in the uh, not too distant past and got there again. Anyway, uh, I had black in this game, and um, I think you'll find it quite interesting. So there are a few moments in particular where I'm really going to encourage you to uh, take a deep, deep look and see what you can come up with. All right, so I played uh, kind of Benoni. We get into a modern Benoni. I guess um, I think I was trying to avoid the uh, the time and off variation with f4 and bishop to b5 check and all that, although since he had already played knight to f3 on move 2, I'm not sure what exactly I was trying to avoid with this move order, but anyway, that's why I played. Maybe I was afraid of some bishop to f4 line and wanted him to commit some other things first. Uh, anyway, nowadays in this position, white players would play h3 and go for this bishop to d3 line, and then after takes and takes, um, the main variation in terms of popularity certainly is to play b5 with very, very deeply analyzed variations that I'm not going to uh, bore or instruct you with. So you'll have to do that on your own or wait for another another show. All right, so bishop to e2, e6, castles, takes and takes. Okay, and here black has uh, a basic choice, whether to play a6 or not. And uh, often, actually, in the line where he doesn't play a6 right away, he ends up playing it soon enough. So, for instance, rook e8, knight to d2, knight b to d7. White plays a4, uh, often with the idea of lifting the rook over to, to um, a3. So there's some variations, for instance, where white plays queen c2, the knight goes to d1, and then the rook can swing over. And this is aimed against some plans by black with knight to h5. So you can um, take, well, for instance, here, okay, knight e5. And I believe there's some old Fisher game, Fisher against, or Spassky Fisher from the World Championship match. And then I believe um, Petrosian against Gligorich. Uh, refuted the plan some time later, so it was like queen c2, knight h5, takes, takes, and then knight to d1, uh, followed by rook a3, h3. Actually, this isn't exactly it, but this is this is like it. Uh, that was the the general the general idea. All right. Um, so anyway, knight e5 is possible, but very often black just plays a6 and just cuts it all out. So anyway, back in the days of yore, I played a6. My opponent played a4, and then here, uh, well, nowadays, if I were playing the modern Benoni, which I don't, but if I were, I would play bishop to g4. And um, here I, okay, I, I kind of think that white should probably play knight to d2, or at least that's my my feeling about this at the moment, to uh, to preserve the knight rather than the bishop. Well, I'm bishop f4, then takes, takes, queen e7, and uh, I, I kind of like this position for black. I mean, I, I have respect for the bishop here, but... Uh, this, this light squared bishop that black has is a little bit uh, superfluous with respect to the rest of the position. So it's not a superfluous piece in the Dvoretsky sense, where you've got multiple pieces competing for the same squares, usually knights. But it's superfluous in the sense that almost all of black's forces are operating on dark squares, uh, or at least to control dark squares, where obviously the, the bishop, the light squared bishop, can't do that. So by swapping itself off for the white knight, which can fight for squares like e5 and d4, or even d6 by swinging to d4 and then c4, d2 and then c4, um, it, it kind of helps. Anyway, this position is, I would say, roughly equal. Okay, so after a4, I played rook to e8 back then, queen c2, bishop g4, bishop to f4, and here I played queen c7. But queen e7 is actually very, very interesting, simply piling up on this, this e4 pawn. And, um, well, one idea for white might be to play h3 with the idea, okay, again, of just grabbing the bishop here, takes, takes, knight b to d7, and, all right, it's um, a normal-ish position. I mean, maybe white is a, a tiny bit better, you know, somewhere between equal and slightly better. Black's queen would be a little bit better placed on c7, frankly, to, um, to help with the queenside counterplay. But, all right, this is certainly playable for black. But does black have anything else after in this variation. So is h3 um, a, a legitimate move? So this is a, a place where I'd, I'd really suggest that you stop and think. And I spent 
actually quite a bit of time analyzing this myself and uh, and then checked later with the computer. And my analysis was actually very good. So, I mean, there were a couple of um, little ideas the computer had to supplement it pretty far in, but but basically I got it right. But it took took a little time to uh, to work things out. So see what you can find here. All right, well, I hope you stopped and thought. If, if not, uh, I'm still not going to give you the whole thing, so I'll give you a little little uh, taste of where you should be looking, and then if you haven't already started looking, go deeper. So the key idea, the key, or let's say the, um, the principal try, the uh, critical variation after h3, is knight takes e4. So this is the move you should have looked at. And if you haven't, then let me strongly suggest that you do so now. See what you can find with this. Okay, well, White could play some kind of bailout, but he wouldn't be in a very good shape. For instance, he could bail out with Bishop takes d6, Queen takes d6, Knight e4, Knight takes e5, and now Knight to d7 is a good move, and Black is a bit better. Uh, very well placed, material is equal, but but um, Black has the Bishop here and is just so much more active. Of course, White could play h takes g4, but Okay, we take the knight on c5, and again, black is doing very, very well. Uh, note, by the way, that white cannot play knight takes b7 because of bishop to f5. So the queen's under attack, the, the bishop on e2 is under attack, the knight on b7 is under attack, and after something like queen to c7, um, okay, you could probably still just play rook takes e2 here, maybe rook a to d1 gives a little counterplay, but just simply rook e to c8 is winning. It's a piece up for nothing. Okay, for one pawn, but that's probably going to drop shortly as well. So the point of this is that bishop takes d6 really is, is not, not a good idea. So white has to go in for this. h takes g4. Okay, knight takes c3. b takes c3, queen e2. And now, of course, the key idea for white in all of this, otherwise it's just a free pawn for black, is rook a to e1. Note, by the way, this would be a variation where... Black would be much happier if uh, a4 and a6 weren't in, but it is. So queen c2, rook e8 check, bishop f8. And now bishop takes d6 is probably good for a small edge, knight to d7. Probably there's nothing better, strangely enough. Rook takes, king g7, takes, takes, rook to b8. And uh, it's, it's a kind of messy position, but the rooks in the past d pawn, I think, together spell some advantage for white. But nothing fatal. But the key move after bishop f8 is bishop h6, of course, keeping the black king buried on, on g8 in this mating net. So the following moves are forced. Knight to d7, rook takes a8, and then f6. So you got to get the king out of there. If queen takes a4, white just wins immediately with rook to e1, followed by rook e8, or rook takes f8 check, and then rook to e8. So for instance, black is one move too slow. Okay, so queen takes a4 was not forced, though. f6 is forced. Um, here, if rook to e1, then black has time for king f7. That's the idea. So rook to d8 is a nice prophylactic move. Managed to find this as well. And here, okay, if king to f7 takes king e8, the problem with this is rook takes h7. So white is um, up a piece at this point, and black has no chance. So queen takes a4 is the best try, protecting the knight. And now, well, if um, if rook e1, then king f7, and, and black is again in time. So the key move here is very nice, very subtle, rook to b1. All right, so the point of this is that if b5, to save the pawn, and keep white from playing rook takes b7, now rook e1, and now the knight on d7, is hanging. So if king f7, rook takes d7, check, and the queen on a4 is no longer protecting it. So this just wins. So queen a5 is a better try, but now rook takes d7, bishop h6, rook b takes b7, and black is hopeless. White's just going to check on, on the back rank.